Hey guys, what's up? It's Amber here with Actors for Autism, and we have the most beautiful and talented of them all, Jay it. Taylor. <laughs> Thank you. Thank Thank you. Nice. It's so nice for you to be here. Thank you. It's so wonderful to be here. I really appreciate it. Happy to see all you guys. <laughs> so how are you today? I'm great. How are you? Yeah, pretty good. Good. Did traffic come in or no? No, no. It was actually a breeze. Yeah, it was nice. Yeah, you know the LA traffic is horrible. I know. <laughs> I've been in New York too, so I've missed, I've missed oh, my yeah. LA traffic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, let's get started. Sure, yeah. Ask away. Uh, first question. What yes. is your process and how does it shift from project to project? That is a good question. Um, well, I've studied all different forms of acting, whether it was Meisner or Adler, and I tend to um, use a little bit of, of everything mm -hmm. when I'm preparing for a role. I do a lot of Ad Stella Adler work, which is a lot of backstory. So I really delve into where is my character from, um, what are their intricacies, how do they walk, how do they talk, what is it that really makes them tick, and I think so much of how we were raised tells who we are in this present day, and so for me, really finding out um, who the character was in their past really says so much about the present moment, and so so I do a lot of work in, in backstory, and um, yeah, and thankfully, like with the magicians, there's a lot to pull from exactly. in those uh, in the in the books. So yeah. it's really fun. The different kinds of aspects of the character. Yeah, absolutely. So it always differs depending on who the character is, where they're from. Mm -hmm. Um, if they're in a magical land like Fillory, or <laughs> or if they're like real people, so, so it really depends. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Um, do you critique your own work when it's finished? If so, how do you define it as a successful? Sorry, successful production. You know, I don't actually critique it mm -hmm. um, because. Um, I always judge it based on if I'm in the moment mm -hmm. on set. That's all that matters. Right. That is all that matters is that I am present, that I'm being truthful to my character in that mm -hmm. moment. And then after that, you have no say in like, what happens in the mm -hmm. editing room or, or anything like that. And mm -hmm. as long as um, I felt like I was truthful in that moment, that's mm -hmm. all that matters. Um, because I think as, as people, we can, we can start to judge ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really important in, um, in today's society to not judge mm -hmm. ourselves or one another and to right. support people. and. Um, and so I think, yeah, as an actor and as a person, I, I tend to, I try not to, to, to create any judgment. That's so. good, you're not hard on yourself. You just let the work be for itself. I, that's what I try to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think it yeah. should be that way, because yeah. a lot of people are hard on themselves when they're in the industry. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And so I think it's really important to, to believe in ourselves and to feel, to feel encouraged and to encourage others. And mm -hmm. so I, I try to, to live by that. Oh, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any auditioning horror stories and oh, what is one of the auditions? God, I had so many horror stories. I don't know how to start. <laughs> I mean, auditioning for me, I think, was a horror story for a long time in general <laughs> because it can be really terrifying, right? It's a, it's a really terrifying process. <laughs> but um, what I decided one day is I went, you know, I'm not going to look at it as an audition. I'm not going to go in with this idea that I have to impress anybody or I have to get the job. I'm doing it because I love it. I love acting. So I'm going to go in and I'm just going to have fun. And I'm going to hope that they have fun too, the mm -hmm. casting directors, whoever is in the room. And so for me, there was a huge shift. And that's when I started actually getting work, is when I let go of all those ideas, <laughs> how it had to look, and just went to have fun. But I do remember that one in particular where, this is so strange, but so I, w I went to audition for mm -hmm. this, uh, this project. Um, can I say, I'm going to say it. It's anger, anger management. I don't oh, know if you remember that show. Yes. But what they do is they, <laughs> there's somebody with a camera over here, and then the person reading with you is behind you. Mm -hmm. So the whole time I'm wanting to look behind me to talk to the person that I'm reading with, but the camera's over here, so they want me to talk into the camera, but I'm actually talking to the person over there. And it was really, like, there's just a lot of strange moments like that that were just really awkward. But um, that's one that I just remember walking out going, I don't know what just happened in that room. I don't know, and I don't care, but I'm not going back. So it was, yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of fun stories like that. But never, never anything too crazy. It never fell on my face or anything, thank goodness. But, um, I don't know. There's there's still time yet for me to do that, so <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> and what's the fun part about auditioning? Oh gosh, I, because I, I mean the whole process. I, you know, I, like I said, I I love the work, and so to be able to go in and just perform for those five, ten minutes, whatever it is, mm -hmm. that's fun. And and to be able to hopefully inspire the people that I'm performing in right. front of 
for those five, ten minutes. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's fun. I mean, I do it because I love it. Mm -hmm. And I hope that, you know, everybody does it because they love it. Yeah, and of course you made your mark already on the world because look at how successful you are at the world that you've been getting. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. And this role's like a true blood, which is my favorite. Yay! And it's like <laughs> slaying the world. It's like amazing. Thank you. It's, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a long journey. It's been a lot of hard work, but mm -hmm. I'm really, really grateful as to where, I, where yeah, I've gotten. You know, you don't look like there was a struggle at all. You look oh, nice. thanks! <laughs> I got battle scars. <laughs> uh, next one. Yeah. What has been the most unexpected thing that has happened on the set to you? Ooh. Or in general? You, you know, I don't know that it, unexpected is the right word for it, but I remember being on True Blood. Mm -hmm. And um, what was unexpected is how much fun I was going to have, because it was my first TV role. Mm -hmm. And um, Stephen Moyer yes. is, you know, the star of True Blood. And, he was so fun, so funny, and there was this, there was this moment where I was the first human that he ate on the show, and um, <laughs> so he's a vampire, yes. and um, and I remember us go. Um, he basically had to like suck my blood in, in the limo, and we just had so much fun. Everybody was like spitting fake blood at one another, and we were joking around on set and. I think that was really unexpected to have that much fun and to be joking that much with somebody and like I could not stop laughing that entire time. So that was unexpectedly amazing. Yeah, so it yeah. Didn't feel like we're kind of no, it didn't fun. feel like we're feel like fun. Yeah. That's always the best part of it. Yeah. Hope okay. things will always feel fun, yeah. <laughs> Next one is what has been your favorite role? Ooh, oh gosh, that is a good question. Um hmm. I would have to say the magicians because it's been um, it's been such a huge life change for me, yeah. I've, and it's been, uh, you know, this we're going into our third season of the show, so mm -hmm. it's a long time that I've been yeah. on something, and so I've fallen in love with the character on mm -hmm. a different level versus if I'm doing it for a year or five months. Um, I mean, every role I love for different mm -hmm. reasons. I love my role in Aquarius because mm -hmm. it was a period piece and so much fun, and I got to work with David Duchovny, who was amazing. Mm -hmm. But. Um, uh, but yeah, I think Katie from The Magicians, because she's so tough, mm -hmm. and she also has such a big heart underneath of it all, and um, she's so multifaceted and has so many layers to her, so mm -hmm. for me, it's really fun to play that, and I, and I personally never know where she's going to go or mm -hmm. what's going to happen next, and so that's also fun, so it's just, it's been such a gift. She's on your toes a lot. Oh yeah, definitely keeps me on my toes. <laughs> the writers keep me on my toes, so, yeah. Well, I mean... And you get to explore something other than who you get to be and all your other characters. And yeah, completely different. very, very different. And there's, there's certain aspects that I try to pull from my own uh, like ideas of life and, and implement it, but then um, for the most part, we're very different. Yes. We're very, very different. Um, I'm a lot softer than she is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely a wimp in comparison to Katie. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so it's, it's fun. I learn from her all the time. Cool. Yeah. Um, what has been the most challenging role, and how did you overcome it? Oh, most challenging role. Goodness. Um, there's been a couple that were challenging. I mean, playing Katie has been challenging in mm -hmm. itself because it's always expanding. It's always different. Um, like I said, she has so many layers to her. Mm -hmm. um, I would say there was a, a film I did. <laughs> called Jukebox Hero, where I played a, an 80s rock star, like aspiring rock star, uh, I have the hair for it, um, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but she was also going through a lot of um, mental strain, mm -hmm. and um, she ended up going into a psychiatric ward, and so it was really emotionally and physically challenging, but I love challenges like that, for me that's what what I live for is those yeah. those really those really big moments. So mm -hmm. it was very challenging, but also so rewarding. Yeah, yeah. I think the challenging roles are like the best roles to play because oh, it gives you like okay, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna thrive to do this. Yeah, thing. absolutely. It forces you to grow, and um, yeah. yeah. So it was it was such a gift. And I'm sure as talented as you are, you surpassed those struggles yeah. and done it beautifully. Thank you. And you dazzled us, not like not on the big screen, but like on TV, like, you. Even, like, it's just amazing. Thank you, that means a lot, yeah. I really appreciate that. Um, what is it like working on a character from, and an adapting the work from magicians? You know, it's been, it's been great because, well, 
a lot of the characters in The Magicians are, are really taken from the books. There's uh, about six, main, six or seven main characters. My character is sort of um, a combination of a couple of different characters. So um, that's been fun to ex explore a bit because it's only like little tiny moments that you see her, um, like in, in the beginning of the book, she actually, uh, it was a character named Amanda Orloff mm -hmm. who dies at the beginning of the book. Oh, wow. And then she, my character's name is Katie Orloff Diaz. So it's slightly derived from that. But, um, but also uh, this Asmodeus character that comes later on. And for the most part, I don't really take from, from the books because it's only like little snippets. I really just delve into the scripts that, um, that our writers right. create mm -hmm. because um, that really gives me so much more than the, the books do. But, but as far as the world that we live in, mm -hmm. um, Fillory and Brakevilles and, and, and their version of New York, um, I take a lot from that as well. But, um, but yeah, for the most part, I just go by by the scripts because it's it's vastly different yeah. than the characters in the books for me. Yeah, yeah. Which is always which is always happening all the time. Constantly. Yeah, yeah. And I, I see that other other actors can get a little frustrated when the character isn't just like the ones in the books. Mm -hmm. So I think it's actually been a blessing for me to to let go of them. Like, oh no, I just get to play what what's given to me instead yeah. of feeling like I'm missing out on yeah. on something. Yeah. So. And there's someone there's something almost human like this. Like there's the where the beauty of the work comes in on yeah. your part. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, my our, my executive producer always says like if I ever ask him, mm -hmm. so what's gonna come up in the character next, or you know what's, mm -hmm. what's gonna happen? And he's like, you know, it's like life. You never know what's gonna happen next. <laughs> <laughs> so I just go with it, and I'm just um, mm -hmm. yeah. So I get the scripts a couple weeks before and, and just roll with it. Yeah, and just have fun with it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's how it should be. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Next question. What can you tell us about Jukebox Hero and Higher Power? When can we check them out? Yeah, so Jukebox Hero, I really have no idea if or when something will happen with that one. Um, uh, but again, it was such a it was such a pleasure to do that film because it was just uh, it was an intense experience in the best way, and I got to play a, a rock star and I got to sing, which I do, so mm -hmm. that was fun. Um, so we'll see what happens with that one. But Higher Power, um, we just finished post production on. Mm -hmm. Um, and that one, it's a sci-fi feature, and um, Ron Eldard stars in it, and um, there's some really, really beautiful actors. And um, I'm, yeah, I'm really, it's a film I'm really proud of, and I'm excited for it to come out and, and see what happens with it. So, so yeah, we'll see in the coming months where they're gonna air it and all of that. But right now, we're just done with post production. So. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it's exciting. Um, what can you tell us? Okay. Throughout your acting career, how have you seen the industry change? Oh my goodness. Um, whew, I've seen it change so much. So I've been, I've been acting for 20 years, if you can believe that. Um, getting old. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I swear. I'm, I'm kidding. kidding. Like, you're, you're, you're my new best friend. Aww. Aww. Um, Aww. Um, <laughs> four down the street. So oh, on. perfect. <laughs> Um, you know, I've been doing it for a long time, but um, this is since I was a kid, and, and um, I started out in theater, but then as I got into uh, like television and film, I've seen it change so much because, um, you know, even 10 years ago, films were so prevalent and everybody wanted to do these big budget films, but then because um, of how accessible TV is, mm -hmm. uh, like because of Netflix and because of the internet, um, it's just changed. It's just changed the industry entirely. Mm -hmm. So, um, all of these film actors are like A-list film actors are now going to TV because that's where that's where the money is. Because that's there's so many shows that are happening, and so it's it's changed a lot. Yeah. It's changed a lot because I. I fell in love with films, and that was sort of films and theater, and that was sort of where I thought I was gonna <laughs> go. But it's it's just changed, and now people just love television and love things that are accessible that people can get right away. And um, so yeah, I've seen it change in huge ways, but it also gives way for even more more and more projects to to be made and more and more actors to get work. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Sounds good. Yeah, lots of changes. Uh, it keeps changing. <laughs> it's still changing. <laughs> well, I mean, it's changing. It's just like you know, social media. Yeah, exactly. Coming up, like yeah. who knows? There's gonna be like 
an Instagram or Snapchat together. Or yeah, and it's, 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 so social media is a big, um, big aspect as well. So now a lot of casting directors or directors or whatever it may be now look at what your following is, which which is is very different mm -hmm. because it's no longer just about the work or the actor. It's mm -hmm. about sort of your your presence in, in the world too, and um, so that's. That's something that I've had to learn because I'm. Yeah. It's not something I'm naturally good at. <laughs> so. Because um, you have the negative and the positive aspects of it. Absolutely, because people I think can get so caught up in in image and what mm -hmm. what you look like and um, and so so I do my best to like put out a positive message mm -hmm. with anything that I that yeah. I you know put out there that. and. Um, and I hope you know that will inspire others to do the same and not get yeah. so caught up in, in what they look like or what this sort of image of society is in society. Yeah, so. Everybody's going to have something to say about you or a casting that you're working with, mm. whether it's negative or positive. Yeah, so you just got to brush it off the show. Yeah. <laughs> I tell everybody my haters are motivated. So yeah. I love that. I love that. That's a good, that's a good saying. Yeah. <laughs> um, last question. Yeah. What is your advice for, for, for Philip? Sorry. What? Is your advice to filmmakers that are kind of Ooh, um, never stop, never give up. I think um, always just keep believing in yourself and what you want to create and your mm -hmm. dreams. Um, I think, I think so often what happens is people love it and they have this dream, mm -hmm. and then because it is a challenging industry, people will give up mm -hmm. when they're that close. I think Tony Robbins once said, "There's like like a two centimeter difference." Mm -hmm. And if you just like keep going just a little bit longer, you're gonna get there. And just keep studying and just know your craft so well so that when it comes time for you to be given that opportunity, mm -hmm. you're the best at it. And that and you're the one that they're gonna they're gonna want. And um, and always just trust that your vision and what you're creating is the right thing, that it doesn't have to look like anyone else's. That you and your dream is perfect and unique just as it is and somebody is then going to love it because it's authentically you mm. so that's my yeah. <laughs> it's beautifully said i wouldn't have said it any differently oh, yes, i would have been like oh stay in school be humble <laughs> <laughs> yeah we've come to the end of our interview yeah, thank, thank you i to see you go but um, oh, it's been it's been such a pleasure all right guys well, this is amber and this is the beautiful Jane. jay taylor oh, thank you so much.